You've got it on KFAR. This is Patriots Lament. It's brought to you in part, of course, by the folks that you just heard that ad from there, the Bighorn Enterprises, for all of your trucking and construction needs, 451-7310. It's also brought to you by Far North Tactical over there at the corner of 8th and Lacey, where you can go to get the items that you need to protect yourself in the case of a poor decision maker or (laughs) plural, poor decision makers deciding that uh, your house would be a good target for whatever reason. If you're looking for guns, any kinds of firearms, accessories, they've got body armor, and, of course, the things that you need for a bug-out bag, too, if that is your uh, your chosen defense. I mean, I, I have full respect for somebody who has got a, uh, a philosophy of nonviolence and who would rather uh, run away than turn and defend himself. I've got full respect for that. How, you know, I don't think it's my personal choice, but you know what? If, if that's your choice, you want a bug-out bag, you can get all the stuff there at Far North Tactical as well. It's over there at the corner of 8th and Lacey, right downtown. Well, Aaron, I think there's a pretty good bet today that with the uh, Golden Days Parade going by our studios right now and with the uh, festival happening in downtown Fairbanks, that either the people who are listening are listening in their car and are unable to call or they're at, uh, well, they're busy, they're out and about and will not necessarily be calling in today. So uh, in, in terms of the best use of the program here today, I'm not sure we're going to get an awful lot of uh, feedback from the phones. Phone lines are open, 458-TALK, 458-8255. So is the chat room, kfar660.com, if anyone has something that they would like to sound off about. Uh, let me ask you this, Aaron, is there anything on your mind? Maybe people are just tired of the godless monkey party. That could be it. I, I mean, the, the the whole point that, that you know we, we've been harping on, that it doesn't really matter whether you're a Republican or a Democrat, that... Either party, both parties, lead to the same place. It's like taking the high road or the low road. It doesn't matter which way you're going to end up at the same dead end. And it, unless we start thinking outside the party system, not and I don't mean, well, let's form a new party. Let's go join the Tea Party. No, it, it, we got to be outside the party system entirely. Our founders warned us about party politics. And you hear about the, uh, the ranchers, farmers, and growers in Alaska who are getting specific federal funds now to aid them for their high transportation costs? Yeah, I heard about that. I mean, how is that any different than anything else the government gives us, though? I mean, we're so far removed from a constitutional government, I personally don't think there's any going back. People don't want to go back to that. Well, it, as long as we can get our free bread and circuses, they're, they're, I mean, people are lulled into a sense of, I, I, you, you used the term security earlier, I think that there's also a, a, an apathy that has set in. People don't really care. Why would you Why would you work harder at finding a more efficient way of getting your goods to market if somebody's just going to subsidize you for the high cost? This Posterity always breeds complacency and always leads to apathy, which you're seeing on a large scale probably for the last 50 years or so. so it's the same thing with the fuel issue. You hear people clamoring for, the state needs to provide us, a ga- they need to get us cheap energy. The state needs to build a pipeline. Well, okay, um, what if they did? What if we got free gas? Where's the, do you know what, what is a great motivator to work hard? Is when you need money. Yeah, I mean, the state could, um, the the people themselves could build a gas line. I, if we uh, weren't so dependent on state subsidies or federal subsidies, we could throw our own money together. We'd take our dividends and build a pipeline. Ah, dividend. There's a great example. I mean, look at that. If people were to plan ahead and use their dividends to pay for their fuel, in a sense, we're already getting a fuel subsidy, aren't we? Well, sure, but, you know, a, a guy can do whatever he wants with exactly. that because it's technically his. But, I mean, what are you supposed to do? Have the government control that? No. I mean, people should throw their dividends together and build their own pipeline, and then we reap all the profit off of it. Talk about handing down bigger dividends to our yep, kids. Yep. Well, and again, though, you know, you, you people got they they take the dividend that they're getting now, and they go out and they buy a snow machine for it. They don't have money to heat their homes. They turn around and they cry that the government needs to do something about the high cost of heating fuel. Hey, I resemble that remark. Say, hey, I think we all do, brother. I don't know a single person. I don't know a single person who refuses a dividend on principle. Not a single one. I did for the first six years I lived here. Was it on principle? Absolutely. What changed your mind? What brought you into the fold of taking of, of the government teat? Um, 
because my the argument my brother gave me that it wasn't the government's money, it was ours, and it's pretty easy to convince me that I should have money. Well, well you know, duh, but in a sense, really, isn't any of that money ours, whatever well, whatever government program you may apply for? Sure, in a sense, yeah. 458 Talk is the number. Good morning, caller. You're on the air. This is Patriots Lament. Who is this? Yeah, hi, how are you doing? Good, who is this? Uh, my name is Mark. Mark, what's on your mind today? Well, you know, I've been listening to your program fairly often since I work evening. And, uh, you know, I, I hear you guys talking about, uh, you know, well, the government's trying to do this and that to us and all that. And, it, you know, what goes through my mind every time you go into that, and and also with, you know, what the EPA is trying to do to us, and extremist bio, environmental groups, that just civil disobedience, mass civil disobedience, what Mr. Bolton was talking about. You know, just no violence needed, just say no and just don't do it. We get together, have community town hall meetings, and we say, "Hey, this is what they're trying to do to us. Let's just say no." And that's you know, but that that it would take mass civil disobedience. But how many people do you know are really willing to go to jail or are willing to uh, have a, a fine levied against them? Or exercise yeah, well, their most important right, and that's the right to judge the law on a jury. on a jury. Exactly. I, I, you know, most people I know try to get out of jury duty. And not only that, they they go in there and they judge the facts as they're presented to them instead of their only duty is to judge the law to keep our government from arbitrarily prosecuting people, which happens nonstop. Mm-hmm. Well, if well, I, that, you go ahead, go ahead, Mark. Well, as things get worse, more and more people will be more inclined to go ahead and just say no, like uh, at the EPA trying to take away our wood stoves. Who's going to give up their wood stoves? You know, you have to eat your home when it's below zero. Historically, it's actually the opposite. As things get worse, people become more apathetic, especially in when the government subsidizes everything yeah. and institutes a welfare state. Well, the exact the, opposite happens of what you just said. There's a normalcy bias. People start thinking, well, it can't get any worse than this. There, there, it's not, it's not, they, they, there's no way things could get worse. Come on. This is as bad as it's going to get. They're just killing gypsies. <laughs> exactly. Now they're just, they, they, It's only the Jews. Come on. <laughs> they only came after the Catholics. <laughs> it's not affecting me. Come on. Right? Am I right? Okay. Thanks, Mark. Appreciate okay. the call. 458 Talk is the number. Good morning. Who's this? This is Charles. Charles, what's on your mind today? Uh, part of a poem by Archibald McLeish. Okay, go ahead. The West winds away from us. We wonder if the liberty is done. The dreaming is finished. We can't say we aren't sure. Or if there's something different men can dream. Or if there's something different men can mean by liberty. Or if there's liberty a man can mean that's men, not land. We wonder. We don't know. We're asking. Archibald McLeish from the land of the free. Thank you very much. Good stuff. 458 Talk is the number. Good morning, caller. Who's this? It's Bill. Bill, what's on your mind today? Uh, it starts at home. Let's. Uh, what did you, did you happen to look into uh, ethics violations for that three hundred thousand dollars for the uh, uh, survey or for the study of uh, trucking gas to Alaska, which is was implemented first by Hank Bartos, which and then uh, uh, I believe Beck took it over from there. Which uh, just the name alone is corruption. Uh, I think uh, if we all uh, go down and file ethics violations, on uh, uh, you'll find a, a whole nest of corruption between the three of them, uh, with them starting at the mayor on down. Uh, that's my point. Uh, what's yours? You know, I, I, I think that that's a really good idea. I, I I think it is certainly worthwhile for people to go and, and use the same political weapon, that filing of ethics complaint that was used against Sarah Palin. In the case of Sarah Palin, it was completely frivolous. I mean, people were filing ethics complaints that had no basis in reality. However, the way the ethics law is written, they have to be investigated. Uh, I, I really, I do not see why, and especially given the, the fact that there was $100,000 from Fedco that went, I mean, what was it, just a couple of years ago, where it was going for a study of a very similar issue, and gee, oops, turns out it was to give uh, business to one of the uh, the firms owned by one of the assemblymen, and that assemblyman ended up getting uh, 
charged with corruption, and the Fedco guy got run out of town. You remember that, Aaron? Were you here then? No, I wasn't here. All right, so I mean that was I mean that was not very long ago at all. I think it's certainly worthwhile, and I would encourage everyone to do that. Four five eight talk is the number. Good morning, caller. Welcome to Patriots Lament. Who's this? This is Winston. Winston, what's on your mind today? I just I just thought I'd call in and tell you I really enjoy the show, and uh, I want you to congratulate the little kids for what they do uh, on the uh, uh, on the advertisement. You know, the reading the. Stuff. Yeah, isn't that an awesome ad? I love that. And uh, that's the, the, the second one now that uh, Big Horn Enterprises has done. Those are all uh, Josh's kids reading uh, those quotes. Uh, that's good. That's all good. 26 of them. Okay, come on now. He doesn't. I don't think he had number 26 in there. I think it's a lot more simple than um, going to filing ethics violations. Anytime any one of these guys tramples on a single individual's liberties, under the guise of protecting all of us, they need to be ran out of the office anyway. They're supposed to uphold the Constitution. It's not being done by any of them, not even the ones that are supposedly champions of our liberties. It's a joke. Hey, thanks, Winston, for listening. Appreciate your phone call today. 458-TALK is the number. Good morning, caller. Who's this? Hey, this is Roger. Roger, what's on your mind? Well, um, I was just thinking about how... uh, Inspiring your commercial is that is, that's like one of the most inspiring things I've heard in a long time. And uh, if those kids really know what they're saying and they know what they're talking about, which I, I have no doubt that they do, um, I, I'd say they they got a you know promising future ahead of them. And uh, except that I don't know how long they're going to let you guys talk like this on the radio. And uh, without shutting you down. Actually, the yeah. real question is, how long are you and the rest of you going to allow us to talk like this? Exactly. <laughs> That's the point from the beginning. And, and Roger, and how, how long are you going to sit and listen to us talk like this without talking like this yourself? I talk like this every day. Beautiful. Uh, <laughs> I, I have, I'm constantly debate, debating people who, uh, who don't see what, you know, the, the current situation. I mean, my boss at work, the other day, he was telling me that he doesn't care if there's a king or a or a queen or a dictator, as long as he can live his life in in you know peace, then uh, that that doesn't concern him. And I I tried and tried to get through to him, you know. I was just I was saying, don't you understand that you cannot live in peace, you cannot live in freedom when you're under a system like that. And uh, really, we're under a system like that right now. I mean, like Obamacare is absolutely unconstitutional, and everybody uh, voted to not have to vote so that it could be put through on a on an executive order. Hey, hey, forget about Obamacare. Bring it right here locally or even statewide. You can't. The challenge has been put out on this show many times for you to tell us a the single listeners, law, a single law that's promoted liberty, and or a single aspect of your life that's not regulated. I had a girl try and take that challenge and tell me that she can't be regulated on fingernail polish. And then I had to point out how many regulations went into fingernail polish before she got her hands on it. Yeah, it says right on the bottle, any th- any uh, use inconsistent with the, with the labeling is a federal crime. <laughs> <laughs> so how is that not regulated? And uh, it's just... It's totally ridiculous. Everything has it on there. If you're using spray paint and they don't think that's how you should use it, you can go to jail. <laughs> well, it, again, you know, it comes back to that issue of all government really is violence, if you think about it. And the more we yield ourselves to someone else's decision of what is right or wrong, the more we're going to be facing the possibility of violence against us. How can you live in peace in a situation like that? Steve, they have a pillow over their steel glove. Oh, okay. So it'll be comfortable when they smother me? (laughs) All right. Thanks, Roger, for the call. 